this is a JRC core holder and if you're somebody who's lucky enough to have to replace a bladder on one it's not an easy thing to do but stick with me you'll get it done these are the tools you will need to do the job a tube of Permatex number one a tool for compressing the rings and an allen wrench to operate that tool a uh, combination screwdriver you could use a couple of different kinds of screwdrivers but I like the combination type and uh, bladder of course it's also recommended to have some solvent and some rags we like using ethyl acid. begin by removing the screws from the rings at either end of the core holder then remove the links and leaf strips now you need to get the clamp rings off and fortunately these come off a lot easier than they go back on as you'll see later on in the video but basically if you pry it between the two sides you'll be able to get the two ends to unhook and then before you know it you will have the ring off and it will look like this please note that on um, repeated on the other side and note the small shim, shim strips underneath. Save those and don't lose them. They're very important. You'll need it when you put the core holder back together. You can remove the bladder from the core holder uh, just simply by cutting it off with a pair of scissors. Remove all the old sealer from the ends. It should end up looking like this. JRC in their infinite wisdom did not design the core holder to come apart any further than you see it in these pictures. So it becomes a little more tricky because now you actually have to stretch the bladder slightly to fit it over the ends of the core holder and to get it in place. If you've ever used compressed air to install a tint sleeve, uh, that's a pretty good method of doing it and I suggest doing it that way. Next is to actually center the bladder on the core holder core itself. When you're done it should look like this. It should not overlap either end. It should sit on the core nice and straight. Do not put any sealer on it at this time. Next fold the ends back. Since the uh, bladder is a little tight fit on the core it's not going to move just simply peel the ends back and that will expose the ends to put the sealer on it. A sealer called Permatex number no. one is what is used originally by JRC and it seems to do a good job. It's easily available at almost any auto parts store across the country. There are other things to you that you could possibly use. I do not recommend using silicone nor do I recommend using a non-hardening sealer like Permatex number no. two. You do not need as much sealer as is shown in these pictures. You need barely enough to cover the ribs at either end. Uh, this is too much sealer and what it will do is when you've got the leaves on there it'll make the bladder stick out too far. It'll make it hard to put cores on the machine. Okay, now we're going to have some real fun. This is a uh, bladder retaining ring. It is something that I've become all too familiar with. Unfortunately, there's really not a better way of doing it. And uh, the nice thing is that at least it doesn't come apart over time. Once it's installed, it's together. Then some other systems that use string or wire to tie the bladder on. So the other than having to actually deal with the rings once they're on they work real this well. This is a tool that I created specifically for putting the rings on. It's made out of a recycled gear in this case 117 tooth 1 8 inch CP and I have access to a lathe so I made it real easy. If you're not quite so able what you might uh, be able to do is to get a large shaft collar of that size but it's tricky. It's so tricky. The purpose, the purpose of this tool is to actually do the otherwise near impossible task of holding the snap ring together so that you can connect the ends. And what you have to do is to place it over 
the snap ring, kind of hold it together by hand and then put the bolts in to secure it. Once you actually start putting it together, uh, start clamping it, but before you get too far, you, have, you do have to put that piece of shim underneath the clamp area. If you don't put it in now, you won't get it in, and if you don't put it in at all, the ends of the clamp will definitely cut into the bladder and cause it to leak. You can see that you can start tightening it once you actually have it in there and the ends of the fixture will come closer and closer together. The idea is to actually get the ends of the clamp into a position through working through the small hole on the fixture so that you can actually manipulate them with a, carefully with a small screwdriver or something and get them into the right place as you can see from these pictures. If you don't have them lined up horizontally you won't be able to get the two ends together but that is not a major catastrophe because then all you have to do is just loosen up the fixture, reposition the clamp, put the fixture back on. Don't take the fixture off, just loosen it up and uh, make sure that your shim is still in place. And with everything correct, you should be able to have it about like that. Note that in order for the ends of the clamp to lock, the fixture must be butted up completely tight. If it's if there's a gap, the ring won't be correct. Once the uh, ring is at least in this position, it doesn't have to mate completely, but the ends of the tool have to be together, and then you can actually get the ring looking like this. Don't worry if they're not completely mated, at least uh, you can take the fixture off. Now you move them back into position. I used a pair of needle nose pliers and you once you've got them in this position you're good to go. Try to avoid bending the clamp ring any more than you have to. This clamp ring has been taken off of this particular core holder a number of times and consequently it shows its uh, rough life. Another interesting thing to note is that when you actually put it together and slide the shim on, you should have it in this position shown. This way you can slide the shim underneath it in the easiest place and, you'll all, and you will be able to compress the two ends a lot together a lot easier. At this point it's looking pretty good and continuing to tighten the bolts on the fixture will bring the two ends closer and closer together. Oh boy, it looks like we got it great here. And that is about the best you're going to get out of it. And take the fixture off and you can see we got it all together pretty nice. Nice try first time. And now you should be at this point. Note that the ends of the clamps do not have to be in the same place. Now you have the next hardest problem and that is actually putting the outer shell back together. For this there is a fairly heavy ring that's shaped like a crown. A much lighter ring that seems to be made out of Dr. Blade material and nine tiny screws. Assume nope. that the ends of the leaves are different. The tapered end goes toward the operator side, the square cut end goes toward the gear side. Assemble the leaves and the lock strips around the core holder as shown. Assemble the pieces as shown so have and just put the screws in it. The you don't have to tighten them. Stalled. Also, kind of notice like that the flower. leaves are very, uh, just simply are very all together different from hand, each end to the other. One end is tapered and the other end is square. The, top. the tapered end uh, goes on the operator side and the square end goes on the gear side. And with that, you're 